The Pan-African Great Green Wall project to stop drying up of the Sahel was launched in 2005. It meant to reforest a 15-kilometer wide band from Djibouti in the north of Senegal over a length of 7,600 kilometers. Up until now, only Senegal has really committed itself to this huge project. The Sahel Zone is an intensive mobile grazing territory for vast herds of cattle, sheep and goats. In the dry season, the animals graze the little grass that subsists. While waiting for regrowth in the rainy season, which only lasts two months, the soil, completely bare, has no protection. Well, here you are, the seasonal problem. A month ago, everything was dry. No grass, the ground was cracked and very dry. One night of rain and the way is blocked, the road's blocked. The paradox of desert areas. The violence of the rainstorms might fool us, but in fact, the amount of rain that falls annually is low, sometimes very low. The rain falls on hot ground, which increases evaporation. Finally, like in South Morocco, the rainfall is very irregular. In some villages, large reservoirs have been built to recover the rainwater. In the dry season, these are supplied by wells which reach the groundwater, but there are far from enough of these. Today, there's only one cart, but a few months ago, there were 40 or so come to get water to supply all the villages. It's always a great surprise after six months of recording, and then there's the result, a radical change in the landscape and the environment. Six months of a totally desert environment, and then after the rain of these last few days, the landscape becomes completely verdant. The rainy season is the only time during which the Great Green Wall can be extended. These are plants that don't get watered. They have to be planted when it's wet because when it's dry, it's too late. And we've a lot of area to cover. In a month, we should have finished planting the area. These young trees, very tender, are delicacies for the herds and all the animals want to eat them. This barbed wire is to protect the plantations. We're in a grazing zone where there are thousands of head of cattle. Without the fencing, they'd graze on anything that was planted. It's an area where there are only herders, practically no farmers. These are herders who are becoming more and more sedentary. Half of them live all around the parcels of land. It's them that keep watch over the land, because they know they'll need grass in the dry season. When grass becomes rare, there's only these parcels of land where you can find something for the animals. The zone was relatively arid with advanced deforestation. When you think what it was like five years ago when we started up, and you look at it now and see what it's become, it's relatively encouraging. We have to plant a distance of 545 kilometers. That 545 kilometers won't just be one plant after another, we'll plant them in groves. This is Acacia nilotica. We've planted all kinds of acacia this year, 1.72 million plants. That's enormous.
Here we are in one of the oldest plantations making up the Great Green Wall. After eight years, we have plantations of this type of tree, which is particularly adapted to drought conditions. These trees were also chosen because they're used by the local population, for example, Acacia Senegal, which makes Acacia gum, which is used in pharmaceuticals, as well as other trees like the balanites, which the local people use for medicine or food. These properties make the local populations conserve the plantations in the long term. Overall, the herders have respected the enclosures, even if, here and there, starving cattle have made a few holes in the fence. Traditional burn-offs to encourage regrowth have been forbidden. A firebreak has been made around each parcel. Thus protected, the ecosystem is reborn. Migrating birds return in masses, particularly in the rainy season. About 20% of the trees planted don't grow, but that's an acceptable percentage in an arid region. The Great Green Wall Agency has seven nurseries where thousands of trees await planting. However, scientists would like to improve the resistance of the young plants. They're betting upon recent experiments which have already worked in laboratories. Here are the acacias which are due to be planted on the site of the Great Green Wall. To help them to grow and adapt to a relatively hostile environment in a few months, where they won't get a drop of water for 10 months, we're giving them a partner. It's a mushroom which will help them to resist these adverse conditions for the 10 months to come. The mushroom that we eat is only the visible part. Its filaments develop under the ground over very large areas. The mushroom, as it develops, will establish a sort of web in the soil which allows a liaison and interactions between different plants. Trees and herbaceous plants are more easily able to exchange nutrients between different sorts of plants. Right now, however, the use of the mushroom is limited to a few parcels of land. And in the short term, our objective is to produce enough of these mushrooms industrially to use them on a large scale over large sections of the Great Green Wall. Right, we're going to take the plants from these two lots treated with the mushrooms. Preliminary tests have shown that plant mushroom symbiosis multiplies the survival rate of young trees by four. Now the experiments are facing the challenge of the field. A lot of herders have settled in the areas around the Great Green Wall. Forest rangers work with them to recruit the labor force they occasionally need and to collect information, especially about what they feel. This project started here eight years ago. Do you find things are positive or negative? What I want to pass on is that I'm just looking to work. But when this project offers work for several months and you leave behind your sheep and goats and donkeys, you work hard and at the end of the month you're not paid and then this goes on for five or six months. Is there any point in working? If you say you haven't been paid, it's because the money isn't in the treasury. Other people and other projects have used it. But when the money comes in, you'll be paid. In spite of recurrent funding problems which have upset payments of promised wages, the herders have become more sedentary over the last few years. Those who are nomadic come back to the country in the rainy season. Herding products are still an essential part of local resources. At the market of Widu, held every Tuesday, goats, sheep and cattle are sold. Yeah. 
While the Great Green Wall has been built to hold back the sand, the intention is also to fight against poverty and diversify revenue sources for the local population. The creation of gardens helps. These spaces are reserved for women who use them for market gardening and horticulture. They gain revenue from that, and that diversifies work. Already they say it's changing food habits. It's not like before. In some areas, because they're nomadic, the children can't attend school. When we started to act here, people started to settle down. And the school which was here reopened because the young people who once moved the animals for grazing stayed here. La Gran Murai. The Great Green Wall. Show me what's good and what's not good. OK, children, what isn't good? Desert. Fire. No water. Those working on the Great Green Wall are not limiting themselves to restoring the ecosystem, they're also taking care of people. This is not just an ecological project. The Great Green Wall will have an impact in transforming the environment, which will have an effect on health. For example, in providing a much more diverse and rich food supply that is much better for today's population, on the other hand, with the water that will come along with the wall, we could have infectious diseases developing. The observatory, run by anthropologist Gilles Butch, records changes, anticipates problems, and measures the efficiency of health and sanitation action in the field. In this notebook, we have the figures over three years of the frequency of malaria. We can see a very big fall, thanks to the release of impregnated mosquitoes. Senegal is absolutely exemplary, since it's managed to link the agency which plants the trees and the scientists which monitor all the modifications which come with that. Perhaps it's a shame that Senegal is the only pioneer, and the others have difficulty following this example, but it has to be said that the Sahel is a war zone, and I think that starting from Senegal, we will convince the others to build this great green wall. We're not yet in the desert. We're at the edge, in the Sahel. We have to ensure that desertification doesn't come to the lands of the Sahel. And that's the fight we're in. There are no utopias. When the whole population of an area are on the move, we have to try something to keep them in place. And that's the challenge. The Oasis program in Morocco and the Great Green Wall of Senegal show that the retreat of fertile land can be stopped. It's not just a question of reconquering lost ground, but fighting to ensure that reconquered desert land is viable. This fight is everyone's business. If it is lost, millions of climate refugees will swell the desperate crowds beating on the doors of Europe.